you've all now, uh, I think, uh, read about uh, the defense leak, uh, this leak of massive quantities of classified information um, on the Discord channel, uh, leaks that came out of gaming uh, groups on Discord uh, that suddenly started publishing uh, top secret and secret uh, documents uh, from the Defense Department. Uh, you know, in the beginning, nobody really knew where this stuff was coming from. It took people a while to figure out where it was coming from and the extent of it. There were always all these disparate, uh, you know, leaks about Ukraine and about Russia and then about Israel. And, and uh, nobody quite knew what to make of it all. It, it, and ultimately, it turns out this afternoon, uh, the FBI arrested a Massachusetts airman by the name of Jack Teixeira. Uh, regarding the document uh, leaks. It turns out that he, I assume it's him, uh, we don't have all the uh, evidence yet, but I assume it was him, that uh, he was um, worked at the military base, had access to this top secret information, managed to somehow take photos of it, and then uh, for uh, early this year started... Um, writing out from the photographs, writing out in his hand, uh, typing out kind of uh, what was in the photographs and distributing on his little Discord channel. It turns out that he has a Discord channel um, of teenagers and, and 20-somethings, most of them under 24, I think. Um, people in the United States, but also overseas, Ukrainians, Russians, uh, and from other places around the world. These were uh, kids who uh, young people, all guys, as far as I can tell, enamored by this uh, guy who had leaked the information. He was some kind of guru to them. And they were all gaga over what he had to teach them and, and tell them. And part of what, in order to keep himself respected by this group, in order to keep himself as the leader of this group, he started leaking out this information to show them, look how important I am. I have access to this top secret information. This is all on a Discord channel. These are not people I think who've ever met each other personally. Um, and he started, so it, it's not like he had any kind of big motive to leak this information, some social agenda to leak this information, or uh, uh, working for some foreign government, as far as we can tell. So as you can tell, he did this to show off, basically. And that then this small group, which had this information, and then started leaking it on other disco channels. Um, after a while, he got tired of writing out or, or typing out what was actually in the photographs of the documents he had printed. So he just started posting photographs. And, of course, those photographs led to the clues that are now getting him arrested. Uh, so I haven't read up the latest about um, <clears throat> everything we know about him and about, uh, but there was a, a, a very good Washington Post article uh, this morning. I think the Washington Post, in some senses, were maybe ahead of the FBI, where the Washington Post had interviewed uh, some of the people on this Discord channel that had not yet been interviewed by the FBI. But it does look like about a couple of a few hours ago that the FBI had been at arrest and this guy is in jail. A couple of quick points on this that I've made in the past, but I think is are worth repeating. One. There's too much top secret and secret stuff floating around that people have access to. I mean, presidents, vice presidents seem to be walking off with this stuff all over the place. Young uh, National Guard airmen have access to Pentagon secret documents that have to do with the Ukraine war and with uh, the, the uh, uh, you know, intelligence agencies assessment of what is going on in Israel. That's just bizarre. Why would anybody have access to this in a military base? I mean, this is intelligence that should be accessible by only people who need this intelligence. Clearly, an airman in the National Guard doesn't need this kind of intelligence. So something is fundamentally wrong with the way, uh, you know, our national security mechanisms are working in the way this uh, information is being kept, this information is being distributed. Again, this comes on the heel of the fact that we discovered that politicians are just walking away with documents. Um, I mean, he obviously had clearance, but 
once you have clearance, does that mean you have clearance for everything? It doesn't mean it's not siloed. Don't you have clearance just for the stuff that's relevant for you? It, it just seems bizarre to me that it, it, this is so accessible and so easy um, and, and that it took the, 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 it took the authorities so long to figure this out. And then the second issue is, which I've also talked about many times, uh, and that is that there's just too much that is secret. And one of the things that came out of this is the extent to which the United States is spying on its allies, the extent to which we listen in on conversations of, uh, you know, Israel's spy agency and Israel's politicians. And we know from Snowden that we listen in, from uh, leaks surrounding Snowden that we listen in on Angela Merkel. We know uh, that, that we listen in on, on politicians and on... Uh, uh, defense, uh, uh, defense department officials and others. Um, w we know that we listen into all this stuff. I think we probably are spending way too much time spying on Americans and spying on our allies and not enough time and not enough focus and not enough, and this goes to a bigger point that I've made over and over again, not enough strategic focus on who our enemy is who our enemies are, and who we need to be dealing with, who we need to be focused on, who we need to be accumulating information about because they truly are a threat to the United States. We throw the net so wide that we lose the focus on the real enemy. We lose the focus on, 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 on what the real problem is. Uh, I think I told you that I was at the NSA spent a, a day at the NSA, this is years ago, this is after Snowden, about six months after Snowden, revelations. And it was astounding to me the amount of intelligence the NSA accumulates about, all, about so many different things um, and how non-strategic they are. And maybe they don't, maybe they're not the ones that should be strategic. Maybe it's just the fact that they get requests from the people above, from uh, the people in the White House, requests that are not strategic and have nothing to do with a real focus on the national defense and the national security of the United States. Uh, but it is, uh, uh, it, there's too much information, there are too many secrets, the government should not be keeping so many secrets from us, and then these secrets are too easily accessible too easily accessible. I guess Michael H. says, if you have top secret clearance, you have clearance for everything. You know, I had top secret clearance in the Israeli intelligence. I had access to a lot of stuff, but I was in a particular department responsible for a particular country. And the intelligence I had access to was on that particular country. And yeah, I guess I could ask for access to intelligence on another country, I'd have to show why it was relevant to what I was doing, but there's no way I could, I could just access, at least in those days, now this is a long time ago, I could access just broad intelligence that was top secret just because I happen to have top secret clearance and was working on, in those days I was working on Jordan, right, and then I was working on Lebanon, but that didn't mean I had access on Egypt or I had access on Saudi Arabia or I had access on Iraq or, or Iran or something like that. It was top secret in the context of what I was doing. He has an airman in the National Guard. What does he need information about Israel, Ukraine, and, and all the other stuff that he released? There's no connection between them. So there's no... In other words, you shouldn't have regular access to stuff that is not immediately relevant for the things that you are working on. And yes, if you have top secret clearance and you show a need to broaden your accent, then it should be granted to you. But you should be able, you should have to show a need. Otherwise, there are too many people with too much access. And who can walk away with it? Take photographs on the iPhone and walk away. Supposedly, when you go into a room with top secret stuff, you're supposed to keep your iPhone out. You're supposed to not have a camera with you. So, I mean, the massive failures here of security 
And I suspect that there are massive failures of security throughout the entire system. And this is not the last or the least of the kind of security leaks that we have. These particular security leaks were particularly helpful to the Russians because they uh, involved some uh, pretty important information about Ukraine, its plans, and what was going on. Um, and, and, and Russia's benefit. Actually, one of these documents, I don't know if you saw this, it's just, it's kind of funny, but it tells you a little bit about how this all works. One of the documents that had to do with American estimates of casualties on the uh, Ukrainian and Russian side, when it got distributed out there, one of these Russian propaganda, um, uh, I don't know, entities out there took the document and then doctored it, uh, it reduced the number of casualties on the Russian side and increased the number of casualties on the Ukrainian side and redistributed as, it as if it was the original document. So the Russians were using some of this just as, as their own propaganda to try to, uh, to, try to show that, uh, to try to pretend that they're in better shape than they really are. But the real damage here was that certain uh, secrets about Ukraine's plans for an offensive in the spring were revealed uh, that certainly helped Russian intelligence, certain, um, uh, certain information about um, Ukraine's uh, anti-aircraft, anti-air defenses was also leaked, which is going to have potentially a profound impact on Russia's ability to attack uh, Ukraine. So this was very helpful to the Russians and very harmful to the Ukrainians, and that is, uh, that is incredibly unfortunate. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and just making an appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.